This is a little bit of an unusual salon for us in that uh, most often the salons are actually related to an upcoming uh, concert. And in fact, uh, this one is related to a concert in a way, but the concert already happened. Uh, our Choir 21 participated uh, last week in the opening concert of the New Creations Festival in uh, the work uh, by Kurtog called Messages. Um, we do, in fact, have a concert this Sunday, and there is information uh, for you available this Sunday at 3 at the Carlu Concert Hall. The Stuttgart Chamber Choir is uh, on tour uh, under our auspices in, in Canada, appearing with our own Choir 21, works for double choir, and also you'll hear the choirs alone. The program includes works by Ligeti, Penderecki, Mahler, Bach, and a world premiere by the Canadian Paul Frainer for, uh, for choir and percussion, featuring the Torque Percussion Ensemble. And we're very pleased that this particular production uh, of the Frainer uh, with uh, Stuttgart and the Torque Ensemble is touring in Canada to, to Ottawa, to Montreal, to Edmonton, and later in Germany, Torque will be going on a tour with uh, Stuttgart Chamber Choir in Germany to, to, to a number of performances performances of the, fr of the new work by Paul Frainer, so we're very pleased about that. We're going to do something else that we never usually do at the very beginning. We're, we're, I'm going to ask you to, uh, we're going to play just a bit of a game. We're going to hear a little bit of music. Uh, imagine a little bit of music and uh, ask you if you can identify who might have written it. Any guesses? <laughs> well, we're, we're, we're getting close. It has something to do with insects. Well, I'm, I'm not, I won't keep you in suspense. It's actually a very early work, a choral work, by one of our guests tonight, Peter Yetfosch, and it's called uh, Insolati Galanti. Am I correct? There you are. Insetti, Insetti Galanti. Yeah, and, and I wanted to do that um, because I thought, in a way, it's, um, it's a bit of a clue. Uh, Peter Yatfosh is uh, a, a wonderful conductor and an extraordinary composer. And um, the moment you think you, 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 you know or can predict what he's going to do, it's not true. You cannot predict. He's interested in jazz. You, you, of course, he has a sense of humor. You always have to be worried about a composer who has a sense of humor. But, but truly, over the, the period of the works that I do know of yours, it is an extraordinary spectrum of styles and explorations. So um, again, that's that. W I just wanted to play a little bit of that choral piece because we are doing a choral concert on uh, on Sunday. And actually, one other thing you mentioned at New Creations, which was new to me and perhaps new to most people, is that Bartok and you and Kurtog and Ligeti all come from the same part of Transylvania. It's, it's quite extraordinary. And we, we are doing something of Ligeti on Sunday, so that's a, that is a little connection. Anyhow, could I ask now uh, uh, Peter Yetfos to join me, and also Peter Ungen. <coughs> We've collaborated with uh, the Toronto Symphony over many years, both in the New Creations Festival and its precursor, which was called Made in Canada. And there was another name. 
right, New Move Fest and the Massey Hall New Music Festival and so on. So we go back a long way, but we've, we've always enjoyed uh, collaborating with, uh, with the Toronto Symphony. We've enjoyed working with, with Peter Ungen very much and also with Loie, who's an old friend who goes back uh, 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 many, many years. And Loie is one of the great community uh, joiners. Loie is a master at figuring out how to bring people and organizations together to make music in a better way. It's quite, it's quite wonderful what you do, Loie. So, Peter, yes, as in, I agree with Peter. <laughs> could, could, um, we, we share a lot in, in common with the Toronto Symphony because we also, as you're doing in, in New Creations, are trying to, uh, to bring, in a sense, composers to life, especially the ones who are already alive. Uh, because in, in the pop world, of course, we're used to seeing who they are. Everyone kind of knows who wrote the song, whereas often in classical music, the, the composer is thought to be this possibly mysterious figure lurking around in the shadows at the backs of halls, afraid of the light, speaking of Transylvania and, uh, and all the rest. So um, could you sp just speak a little bit about, um, I guess, the bigger motivation behind uh, this festival and in the long run, what, what you hope to do. Yeah. Well, thanks. Um, it's very nice to be here and see all of you. Uh, and congratulations also on everything that you've done for... How many years have you been involved in this now? Next year it'll be 30. 30. Wow. Fantastic. <laughs> well, you know the old saying, the greatest requirement for a composer is that he be dead. And, uh, and I think when, uh, when I arrived at the Toronto Symphony, it was very important to me that I was going to try to breathe some new life into the organization. I think that's everyone's responsibility and an ongoing responsibility. Um, as far as presenting contemporary music was concerned, the, w the, the one thing I knew I had to avoid, I felt myself, was to put the words music and new next to each other. Because um, with the exception of, of you and, 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 a, and a few of your friends, um, that puts a lot of people off. Why, I don't know. But new music, and I said this the other day as a bit of a joke, you know, somebody went up to John Drummond when he was running the proms and said, you know, I really can't stand contemporary music. And he said, are you bragging or apologizing? <laughs> and, and I thought, you know, th this is, so th th there's always a challenge to get people not to be afraid to open their minds and open their ears to new sounds. And I felt that to create an environment for it, was going to be really important. Something that was comfortable, some, uh, give them an experience where they were going to actually meet uh, the composer and hear the composer maybe say a few words about their piece, talk about the inspiration for it. Um, I mean, this has been the most fantastic 10 days here. Uh, Peter Edvush is uh, so remarkable in, in every single way. Um, and, and this is a great example of what can happen if you have courage. And also, if you're lucky enough, frankly, to have a board that doesn't close it down, because it's a huge investment for an organization like the Toronto Symphony uh, to, to put on two weeks of, of, of music by living composers. Uh, I mean, more or less, Vivier should be living. Um, so th th that was the, the thrust of it. Create a festival, commission works, also bring works that have been performed and premiered recently, anywhere in the world, that you think are of great significance. So the first festival we did had Henri Dutilleux uh, with us as a guest, and we did uh, maybe the third performance in the world of Correspondence, uh, the most beautiful song cycle. Um, and he was there, he was a sprightly 89. We couldn't keep up with him, actually. Um, and he had jet lag. Um, we would go out, and uh, around midnight, he'd be encore un peu de vin, and um, we'd all be going, oh. But he was phenomenal. How old is, is uh, Mr. Dutier now? 96, no, something like that? 90, yeah, yeah. Uh, he's really remarkable. And, and that was sort of the beginning of it, that we had this wonderful life going on on the stage, and people became very fascinated by the idea. Um, and, uh, you know, working with you and working with other people who really care about new music has, has given us tremendous energy and, and that extra confidence that you always need to, to keep going. So um, I'm delighted that the, f the festival appears to have been received as, as a, a successful and important event in, in the city of Toronto, and, uh, and we're just going to keep going. Um, and the other Peter. 
Um, this, of course, is, uh, is, this your, is this your first visit to Toronto? In Toronto, yes, this is the first uh -huh. time. I conducted in Montreal several times, okay. but in Toronto okay. is the first time. Uh -huh. yeah. And this is your first contact with the Toronto Symphony then? Absolutely, uh, yes, uh, yes, that was uh -huh. first, yes. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and I, I, I was curious uh, to know, um, I've, I've attended both, both, of, uh, both of the concerts enjoyed and, and enjoyed the music very much. Um, there are a lot of stereotypes about how how well uh, recent music is received in Europe and how, how well it's received in North America and where, where the audiences are better or worse. C could you reflect on that just a little bit, uh, for ex on, on in a way, on the current sort of European perspective? I think we might, we hear a lot of rumors about what's going on and what's not going on, but uh, how does recent music fare you, in you Europe? You mean the contemporary music? Yes, the yes, contemporary music exactly. Scene. We're not going to use Gen new music tonight, yes. yes. <laughs> we're just going to, we're going to use recent yeah. music. <laughs> yes, we, we don't use more this contemporary music <laughs> term. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's the, the newest wave, mm -hmm. which is uh, very important, I think. A uh, few months ago, uh, uh, Armin Köhler, who is the, the uh, director of the Donaueschingen Musiktag, which is a very important, uh, I don't say contemporary music, it's just music festival. And this is the new new wave to, to say that there's no difference between the traditional music and the contemporary music, it's just music. Music is what is good, and it's not music is what is not good. As a, it's just the quality is, is, the, is the importance. But uh, uh, that would be fine if it could happen so. <laughs> but I know there's uh, several places, uh, it's a real, uh, problem to, to have uh, a big problem, a big uh, audience uh -huh. uh, for the co contemporary music, uh, except if uh, there is a continuity in the organization. I, I started uh, beginning of the 80s in Paris as a music director of the Ensemble Intercontemporain with Pierre Boulez. And uh, the, uh, the repertoire of the ensemble was new. And that also for, for was new for everybody, for, for Paris. Mm -hmm. And uh, in the ensemble was 31 musicians, 16 administrator, 16, also the half, half of the, <laughs> <laughs> half uh, so much uh, administrator as, as musicians. But uh, that was uh, very important because six from them uh, was uh, occupy, occu occupied, Mm -hmm. uh, by the, it's called in French animation, animation, animation. The animation means to prepare each concert, but really each concert. Every week we play the one, a new program, every week. Uh, every Monday, mostly the, on the Monday. And uh, these six uh, uh, animators, uh, with one or two of the, of the musicians from the ensemble, uh, visited different schools, different uh, organization, and uh, show what, how is the next program, what, what is that, what we play the next Monday. And uh, the, the, prog the, uh, the audience at the beginning was perhaps 150, 200 in the first year, the, but uh, generally. And the second year was uh, 300, 400, I don't know. As a, in five years, but really five, five years long, every week, one concert, a new program. After five years, we have an audience from 1,000, 1,000, uh, 1,200 people. And from that time, from the 80s, 90s, uh, 2000, now, we have a permanent uh, public in, in Paris. It's no more problem. The other uh, element, element, uh, element, element. element uh, it's very important, is uh, the festivals. Also this, this kind of festival that you do now, because the festival gives a very clear uh, thematic, as a very, very clear for the audience what mm -hmm. happened in this, this time. And the, the big cities in Europe, as London, uh, as Paris, Berlin, special, Vienna, they have an, practically this is a permanent festival, one festival after the other. Each one has a different thematic, mm -hmm. but the, the audience uh, knows exactly what will happen. Mm -hmm. 
And the, for example, the Wien Modern. Wien Modern Festival is uh, the one month in November every year. And this is now the 26th year that it uh, was founded by Abado. Abado was the first because it was the same problem in Vienna. Uh, 26, 27 years ago, there was really no, no audience for, for, for this kind of music. And Abado was the, the, the director of the Wiener Philharmonic at that time. And they say this is impossible as so do something. So we start now with the Wien Modern and uh, we, we create a festival just for the contemporary music. But uh, that was very, very tricky because there was not, not only contemporary, there was a mixed. Mm -hmm. uh, at the beginning it was as important and later they tried to push more to the contemporary, less, uh, less traditional. And now it's a very good balance mm -hmm. uh, between, between both. And now this is a big house, the concert house in Vienna. Mm -hmm. This is, I think, the, the 2,000 people was sold out. Mm -hmm. the, the whole festival, the, the whole, whole month. Although I think this is the only uh, uh, secret in this uh, thematic is, is just to be... Uh, to, 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 yeah. Yes.